BMC, trying to bring about a better uh, BMC. Uh, I'm sure tonight, I, again, I wish we would have a, a bigger crowd. I know the people as I look around, most of them are hardcore. I have a feeling this may be a harbinger of interest in this overall uh, election, and we're going to have to try to counter that. But I don't think there's going to be any real problem tonight, but let's let me state a few rules. Uh, we are going to probably take some questions from the floor. Uh, when we do, or if you have any questions, raise your hand. Raising your hand means you're asking for me to recognize you. It doesn't mean you can start speaking better error, memory error, other crafts, activities, things like that. Just introduce ourselves and say, hey, we're here. We'd like to get you on board to vote this group of people out when the elections finally begin. That was, again, we started in 2009 when elections were just a gleam in people's eyes. We had no idea where, where they would go. So we're very proud of what we have been able to accomplish and, of course, with others in bringing about what even a few months ago probably seemed an impossibility. Avalanche for Smart Energy is the only authentic grassroots movement operating in Cobb County. Uh, we build ourselves in an independent group. That is, we have no ties to any special interest groups. We have no... No funds of ours come from any special interest groups. None of us receive a salary for what we're doing. We're all volunteers. We're simply all members of Cobb EMC trying to bring about a better Cobb EMC. Uh, I'm sure tonight, I, again, I wish we would have a, a bigger crowd. I know the people as I look around, most of them are hardcore. I have a feeling this may be a harbinger of interest in this overall uh, election, and we're going to have to try to counter that. But. I don't think there's going to be any real problem tonight, but let's, let me state a few rules. Uh, we are going to probably take some questions from the floor. Uh, when we do, or if you have any questions, raise your hand. Raising your hand means you're asking for me to recognize you. It doesn't mean you can start speaking, please, just to make sure we're all, all, all awake on that one. Uh, we're going to ask each of the candidates now to come stand where I am and make a two-minute uh, declaration of their platform and their biographic information. I wish there could be more time, obviously, with 21 candidates. Uh, our time is limited. After that, we will go to, we will, t I, we have been collecting questions as people came in tonight. Hopefully somebody filled it out. I will stand here and pose those questions, sort of to try to get a consensus to the candidates, and we will just let them answer as they, as we around. And as I said, time permitting, we will try to have some questions from the floor. Uh, I think most of you probably read our newsletter explaining the cameras and the TV. Uh, this is put together by uh, GP Hughes. He is providing us a live streaming video via, via the internet now over his web page. So people can sit at home and watch this on there. Uh, in all their uh, computers, if they like, by simply signing on to the internet. It also will provide us with a permanent record, uh, a, a, which can be used in the future, put on YouTube. So again, what happens here tonight is just not happening here tonight. It is going to be made available to, I would certainly thousands, if not more, individuals who, who are going to be voting in the Cobb EMC elections. Uh, and with that, we're going to start, and I'm simply going to come up and we, I am going to do a little more than introduce or to bring the candidates on board. And then I will retire to the background and let the candidates go from there. And we will just keep running the, ca the candidates through this suite. Same with that. I'm going to turn first to uh, our area nine, one of our area nine candidates, Ms. Sherry Wolford. Thanks, Thanks, Dr. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. And I appreciate all of you coming out. I just want to take a minute to tell, to re respond to why I decided to run. I decided to run because I was angry with what I saw going on, and I believe I have the experience and the professional background to change that, to bring Cobb back to where we all would like it to be. I can remember when Cobb EMC was a different organization than it is today, and I think most of you can too. I want, to, I want to spend a minute to talk about two things. One, this is a business board, and Cobb EMC last year had operating revenues in the neighborhood of $600 plus million. So it's really important that the people that you elect have a solid business background. I have a 
suspicion that part of what went wrong with the last board was that you had people on that board that truly did not have the skills and ability to make effective judgments about what was coming before them. Therefore, they were at the mercy of other people to tell them what to do and how to do it. So I think it's important that the person have a strong business background. I think it's equally important that they have strong ethics. And I want you to know I have no ties to anyone. I know no one with Cobb EMC. I have no political ties. And quite frankly, I don't recommend political ties because most of us recognize that political endorsements come with strings. It's either a reward for past favors or an expectation for future favors. So I don't have political ties. I don't have ties to anyone but Cobb EMC. That is my focus. And looking forward, I want to just mention a couple of things I do support because I think it's important that you understand that for the future. I support energy conservation as a key strategy for cutting demand and conserving limited natural resources. I support objectively looking for new energy technologies and equipment that will reduce costs and cut energy consumption. Unfortunately, too many things are just disregarded without ever being given a fair opportunity to show what it can do. And I also support providing economic incentives to assist members switch to more energy efficient appliances and systems. I, for one, took advantage of a Georgia Power offering and switched out some things in my house. And I'm saving a considerable amount of water and energy each month. And I think we need to be doing these. Tom, let me know. <laughs> we need to be doing these and making these available to our members. Thanks. I know you're back there. And I know I can't say my name in two minutes. <laughs> oh, I, I apologize. Thank you. All right. Following quickly on, another Area 9, Wanda Taylor. Hi, I'm Wanda Taylor from Area 9. Um, I did not bring extra handouts tonight. You all got them in the mail. I decided not to kill another tree. I don't know if that's good for me or bad for me, but um, you can read my biography in the uh, flyer you got from Cobb EMC. Um, I'm an honest, um, intelligent individual, I do believe, and I've chosen to put my talent and abilities to work for the continued reform of Cobb EMC and to get the reputation of Cobb EMC not only back with the members, but back with the community as well. I have over 30 years business experience. I've been a director of operations for a portion of a manufacturing company that had three production facilities, two in Georgia and one in Canada. Um, had responsibility for about 500 production employees and over 100 salaried employees. So while I've never been on a board, I'll go ahead and tell you that up front, I don't have direct board experience. I do have a lot of good business experience. A degree in industrial engineering from Georgia Tech and a master's from Mercer University. Um, and I, I'm a person that doesn't have an issue with asking hard questions. I don't have preconceived notions about the resolution to everything that's gone on with Cobb EMC, but I'm willing to get out there and learn and get educated about the things facing Cobb and EMC and become informed before I make decisions about what needs to happen um, as far as the future of Cobb EMC goes. If you're looking for somebody with board experience, that's not me, but if you're looking for somebody that's going to work hard and is willing to put out the extra energy and effort to make a difference in Cobb and EMC, I would love to have not only your vote, but several other votes um, on March 31st. Thank you. By the way, our order of events, we just are doing a reverse order by area and then uh, reverse alphabetical order tonight. That is the order we're following <laughs> through here. We thought we would, you know, particularly area nine, would end up at the, at the bottom of the line here. So now we're gonna turn to area eight, and our first speaker will be Thomas Schroeder. Thanks, Tom. I'm Tom Schroeder. I'm a candidate for Area 8. I would like your vote. The reason I'm running is I know cooperatives inside out. I started with cooperatives in 1974. I lent for a couple of decades to electric membership cooperatives around the country. I know them very well, but I don't have any ties. I've been out of that industry. I, I'm actually an attorney for the Georgia Lottery downtown right now. My wife told me not to bore you that I have an MBA from Vanderbilt, that I, I've been licensed to practice law for 38 years and all that. But cut to the chase. You've got the information that you got from Cobb EMC. 
What you need and what Copy MC has had is legal problems. You need variety on this board. You need a lawyer on this board. My platform is very similar to everybody else's. Members' rights, change the bylaws, uh, transparency and openness. But you know what? If you'd had a good lawyer on the board, none of this would have happened because there's already existing law that said that what occurred in this organization shouldn't have occurred. A healthy cooperative, there's a, a couple of qualities to it. Member control, one member, one vote. There's a competent, obedient, loyal board that lives up to its duty of due care to watch the business. The management is competent and under board control. The simple thing is a board needs to have a duty of loyalty to the organization, to have a duty of due care, and to not take a corporate opportunity for itself. These are really important principles. It is black letter law. That's why I brought up here law of cooperatives, and I want to read three things that board members are supposed to do. And I know the time is running, sorry. Refrain from deriving personal benefit from the cooperative. Avoid granting privilege and benefits to uh, mem special members of the group. Avoid discriminating against members. Manage conflicts of interest and act in good faith. The prior board didn't do this. They didn't live up to their duty of care. Trust me, I will. Thank you, Tom. All right, and moving right along, Mr. Tim Gaze, who is already approaching the podium. My name is Tim Gaze, and I'm a candidate for the Area 8 board seat vacated by Sarah Brown. And uh, one of the opportunities that I had last June was to sit down with my board member, Sarah Brown, uh, Chip Nelson, and David Johnson who Chip is our CEO, David's the CEO, and uh, we, I had about 25 questions for them, and uh, Mrs. Brown just couldn't answer the questions. Chip couldn't answer the questions about Plant Washington, why there was no financial analysis. And my, my background, I've got more than 32 years of uh, private sector business experience with three large multi-billion dollar corporations. The difference in my background uh, is that I, I started to work with Houston Line and Power Company, an electric utility, Dow Chemical, and I work with Georgia Pacific. And I've been with Georgia Pacific since 1989 within their manufacturing operations. And I relocated to Atlanta, the corporate office, in 2006. And uh, I live in Kennesaw. Been married to my spouse Teresa for 24 years. We've got two children in Harrison High School. This is our corporate office. I'm going to retire here. Georgia Pacific has actually vetted me, the Chief Legal Officer, Government Affairs, the Government Affairs Legal. And in terms of being able to, to uh, uh, stand up here and, and say, okay, well, you're, you're, you've got this really uh, great job with Georgia Pacific, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a time consumer, but Georgia Pacific has actually given me the opportunity of community service should I be elected to the Copy MC board. So, in terms of my background, being able to bring, bring a business focus to the board of directors because you need to have directors that know how to count and to be accountable. Uh, thank you very much, Tim Gates. Thank you. Next, from also our area. Bill Clements. Uh, thank you. My name is Bill Clements, and I'm a candidate for Gary A. And let me kind of start off picking up with some of the others. Why I got involved. Several years ago, I went to an annual members meeting over there on the low dock over at EMC, one Thursday morning, 10 o'clock. And I saw questions come up, and I was dismayed at the responses or lack thereof. Then I was really astonished at what was going on. Then I became a little angry, so I kept going to these meetings annually. And finally, I talked to Mrs. Brown also, who is my area rep, who's been on the board for over 30 years. She wouldn't answer any questions, and you know, that's kind of the way they do business. It was a big secret. And I said, look, this is a monopoly. I have to belong because you are the only service 
about or I have, why can't we ask questions about what's going on around here? And you know the rest of the story. There is no transparency, there is no accountability, and certainly no openness. So basically that's how I got involved in this thing. Since then, six years ago now, almost seven, I've been to every meeting of every organization. I was one of the ones that testified for openness that Ms. Smith was talking about down at the uh, State House. I've gone to Sierra Club. I've gone to the uh, Owners Association, the Alliance here, you know, all the groups, Take Back Cobb. And the first thing I have a real problem with, folks, there's no disclosure in, during this campaign and elections. Right, Johnny? None whatsoever. We don't know who these groups are. There's only, like Roger back there, he'll tell the world who he is. He's Sierra Club. But where's the money coming from? Where's the full the financial disclosure of what's been going on during these elections and these bettings and so forth? That's not the way you do business, particularly when it's monopoly. You should be standing. I learned many years ago at IBM when I first made manager, you've got to stand up and be accountable for your vote, and you've got to express them with confidence because you've done your homework. And that's not what's happening here. So, you know, who are these people? Who are, you know, who's the president? Where's the leadership? Where's the full financial disclosure? That's what it's all about. And, uh, you know, we need that kind of, of this transparency. Everybody's talking about transparency, but we're not seeing any of it. Not at all. And that's a big elephant in this room right here tonight. And I think everybody here at this table up here knows about that. Now, the beddings, those are the most flawed beddings I've ever seen. There was absolutely zero ballot control. I saw, I personally was in every one of them. I saw people stuffing the ballot. I saw people who were not members of DNC voting multiple times. I mean, I'll testify under oath unto God on that stuff. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Then I saw secret ballots disappear. There were no secret ballots. You know everybody in this room knows there were no secret ballots. I'll better shut up before I get wound up good here. I appreciate the questions. Thank you. Good. Good evening, and thank you for coming. I'm going to read a statement because uh, the last time I had Will, uh, uh, my neighbor Tom here gave the microphone from me. So this is a two-minute statement. Why am I running for the board? To serve and represent the owners of Cobb EMC, and specifically to help change two things that no other candidate has mentioned. One, add a new standing committee for owner and customer relations. Two, change the structure of the board annually rotation, by an annual rotation of the responsibilities of each director. Further explanation, in order to successfully overcome this devastating breakdown in the relationship between the owners of Cobb EMC, their board and their management, we need to create a new standing committee for owners and customer relations. The committee for owner and customer relations would on an annual basis hold member meetings in each area and ask for the people's input, not just one-way communications, communications both ways. We should do a poll of every member each year to gauge how and quantify how we are in improving uh, the efforts of Cobb EMC. And secondly, we currently have three officers, two board memberships, and three standing committees. I should, we should make two small changes to the rules in order to change the structure by adding the by separating the secretary treasurer's positions. I'm sure we're all in uh, organizations which have separate secretary treasurer positions. That's the most modern way of, of handling both of those. These changes would also give each of the 10 directors a very responsible uh, position, chairman, vice chairman, secretary treasurer, the committees. These, these positions will be rotated among the directors annually each director would lead one position and would be the understudy for the position he would have the next year. Each director would also sit on at least one standing committee. These strategic changes would accomplish two very significant goals. It would drastically reduce the time it would take for each director to become knowledgeable, and it would keep all the directors equal as they went in. Thank you. And it would keep all the directors equal as they went in. Thank you. Moving right along with Area 5, Trevor Sharp. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> I'm Trevor Sharp, and I'm a candidate for Area 5. Um, I started this journey about five years ago, when I, uh, uh, along with uh, five other people, 
Campbell filed a derivative lawsuit on your behalf against Hobby MC uh, for unjust enrichment, basically ripping us off. We all know about that. Uh, the, the results of our lawsuit have, have been monumental for Cobb EMC. We've ushered in some many, many, many changes for Cobb EMC. Uh, some of the things that we, we, we've accomplished is that we terminated the 11% Cobb Energy Adder fee. We transferred the Cobb EMC assets back to Cobb EMC that had been improperly transferred. We created a process for fair and equitable Cobb EMC board elections. We dissolved Cobb Energy's unprofitable businesses. We ended the retirement packages for new board members. And we ended the tenure of Dwight Brown. <laughs> According to court records, our lawsuit saved us members over $100 million. And that's real money, folks. I am the only candidate running for office that actually has a record for reforming Cobb EMC. No other candidate has. I actually voted in the both of the last two elections which some of the candidates didn't even show up to vote. I have been participating in reforming Cobb EMC for the last five years through all of the organizations. I've attended meetings at all of the organizations. I have been clearly very active. I didn't just show up to the party a few weeks ago. I would certainly appreciate your support uh, as I run for the board, and uh, thank you very much. Good evening. Um, my name is Charles Sevier and I'm running for the board from Area 5. Uh, in 1973, I graduated from the University of Southern Mississippi. In that same year, I got married to my bride of 39 years, Beth, and I also began my 35-year career with UMAC. I'm running to eliminate the negative halo that surrounds the Cobb EMC by building a foundation that's going to be responsive to the membership, the employees, and local community. Uh, Mr. Ragsdale had mentioned about the platforms that most, most of his members had already read or seen or heard everyone talk. And with the exception of John Wallace's comment about the committee being set up, the platforms are pretty much the same if you read them. Everybody's kind of wanting the, the same things. So as a, a Cobb EMC member, here's how I see this scenario shaping up. I believe that a forensic audit that we've all agreed on is going to happen. Um, and I think that's going to take care of the past. I believe that transparency and governance is going to take place with the revision of the Cobb EMC bylaws. And they've already formed a committee that we all found out that's already started that process. But when things are all done, or these things are done, we need people who can make real world business decisions based on the challenges that face Cobb EMC as a business. During my 35 years at GMAC, I held management and executive positions in credit finance, collections, marketing and sales, business development, and dealer relations. Fiduciary responsibility and risk management were daily key elements in all my positions in both North America and international. Therefore, I know what questions to ask and who to hold accountable to. I'd appreciate your vote on March 31st. Thank you. Well, you've heard a lot from everyone here today, and you know there's lots of things to do, so I'm going to cut right to the chase. I think in order to accomplish the things that we need to do, we're going to have to come up with a strong strategy. And my strategy is simple. Finalize the past, evaluate the present, and plan for the future. Now, in finalizing the past, we've got to get the past this forensic audit. But in order to do that, we've got to do a couple of things. And that is, we need to put bounds on it, we need to figure out the time and the uh, cost associated along with the risks. Put that in place. The second thing here is to evaluate the present. That's to look at all the policies and procedures that encompass all these things of transparency. The second part of that in, in the present is to pick the right person. Cobb EMC is a technology company. It's an electric company. It uses technology. I'm probably one of the few people that have ever built an operating center, call center, switching centers, 
and IT information. I have probably the strongest uh, background in technology, and I believe that that is the key to success here, is understanding the technology and the direction that we're supposed to go. And finally, the last part is the plan for the future, and I think my strategy here is to uh, to implement the first two, and that will bring us back to the transparency and the fiduciary responsibility that we're all looking for. Thank you. My name is Vern Carvagna, and I'm running for Area 5. And the only reason why I'm running for uh, Copy MC Board of Director is because I want to prevent any future board of directors or management from enriching themselves at the expense of co op members. I think the only two reasons why the last board failed is because they had a lack of judgment and no character. Somebody doesn't get up one morning and then all of a sudden decide that they're going to uh, uh, rip off the company or uh, be uh, crooked and uh, start doing things like that. These things take a long time. Uh, it's a little bit here, a little bit there, but somebody in the boardroom, and the boardroom is the, the heart and soul of every company, somebody has to stand up and say, this is it. We're not going to go any further and we're not going to tolerate this. But none of the board members <coughs> did that. Everybody failed. And the only thing I can say is, is that I'm not interested in a long-term position or long-term uh, with Cobb EMC. I think that the best way to do it is to have one five-year term, and then if you want to be re-elected for the second five-year term, you should have that option. Again, my name is Vern Cavagna. I'm from Area 5, and I appreciate you both. Thank you very much. And Mr. John Ernst, Area 5. Good evening. I think I've talked to a lot of everybody here. Um, my name is John Ernst. I'm running for Area 5 like the rest of my cohorts. Um, I work for University of Georgia as a business consultant. Uh, my whole life has been spent in business. I ran a chain of 10 stores for 23 years. I've lived a business. And I think part of the problem I hear up here, the board of directors saying what we're going to do, the board of directors basically provides a strategic plan for the company. We're not involved in day-to-day -day operations. You're basically a board of directors that tells them how we're going to do it, where we're going to do it, and what's to be done. Now, I am a little different. I think that we should have open board meetings. A lot of people vote for that. But I also think every vote you make should be published. And so you are accountable to the people in your area. I am for changing it so you're voting from your area for your representative. I think it can get skewed with everybody in the whole common seat district voting for an area where they don't know you and you're, you're not accountable to these people. Like people that vote in Area 9 for Area 5, they're not in my area. How can I be held accountable when I'm trying to cover the whole common seat area? I'd rather, much rather make it localized. I am also for energy savings and trying to promote energy conservation. I think that's a big thing. Uh, peak power demand, that's what costs us the most money as an energy company. So my plan is to promote that. And I pretty much agree with everybody saying the same thing. We definitely need a forensic audit. We definitely need to have term limits for the board and I'm not for the five years. I think two, three year terms is more than enough for anybody. And I am actually willing to serve for no pay whatsoever. I think that's part of the problem we had with the, the past war. They were getting a lot of benefits, a lot of pay, and they were voting the way our past president wanted them to vote. But anyway, my name is John Ertz, and I appreciate you voting. And Jamie, Area 5, Jim Brown. Good evening. It's good to be here. It's, uh, Thank y'all for coming. Uh, I was born and raised in Cobb County. I have lived in this community for all but three years of my life. So I love this place. When I moved away to Columbus, Georgia for three years, this is where I moved back to. Uh, my parents were Cobb EMC customers, and, and I've been a Cobb EMC customer virtually all of my life. So uh, this, this is a journey of love for me. Uh, but I think the thing that separates me from the rest of the candidates is is 
a the real desire for, or, or the, the real reasons I have to run for this particular office. I have spent my entire life virtually in the electric utility business. You know, one of the problems with that board is, was the fact that they didn't understand the business. I, I've been in engineering, sales, marketing. I've dealt with virtually every department in, in businesses. I even worked with Cobb UMC as a consultant, although I have no close ties or anything that would cause me to, to uh, make any decisions that would be uh, not be best for the customers. That's another area I think is really important. We've got to make it easier for the customers to, to communicate with the board. Right now, it's, it's, it's a, a nightmare. So I would like to see that communication better. I would like to see it be two-way communication, whether it's committees or not. Um, I, uh, I think that the, with my knowledge, experience, that uh, I could ask the hard questions. I don't think anybody on the board asked hard questions before. They gave it a rubber stamp. They, they voted for everything that came before them. I think we've had people who, uh, who have said that they have uh, read some of this information and, and every vote was unanimous. I can assure you there should never be a unanimous vote. There should be, you can, you, I hope you all picked up my uh, uh, bio and so forth. I, I, I'm a very steady person, married to the same lady for 43 years, have, have uh, three sons and seven grandkids. And my only interest is to see this thing go forward, to see Cobb UMC become the, the kind of company they can be. And I promise you, if you vote me, I'll, I will make every vote like each one of the customer owners is looking over my shoulder. And finally, our last area of five candidate, B.J. Britt. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I was, I don't want to believe the way, oh. and I would appreciate very much if I could be worked in the uh, area of five candidates. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We, we will do that. Thank you. I hate to agree with John on a lot of things, but... Uh, we're 100% on that. I mean, if you've been a, a, you know, an EMC board long enough to get retirement benefits, you've been on there too long. Amen. Uh, and everybody's pretty much said, you know, what I would want to say. Just look at the background. Uh, my bio is back there on the back table. You can see it. I have a background, a uh, graduate degree in engineering, a graduate degree in finance and economics. I've been in the utility industry for over 20 years. I worked for the non-regulated subsidiary of Southern Company for about five years. And I have my own energy consulting business right now that we contract with uh, uh, large industrial customers. And what I would like to see done here, most importantly, what no one's really talked about in detail, is we've got to change the way the company does the financial reporting. We need more detailed reports. Uh, if you've looked at any of the Kyle UMC financial statements, they are a sham. They really are a sham. We ought to upgrade our reporting standards to reflect what the SEC at a minimum is requiring other companies like statute. And basically also, we could move to what the FERC is required for the investment on utilities. I will work to make sure that that happens. Term limits, I will talk about that. We've got to prepare for low growth. In this area, somebody said that didn't know uh, what questions to ask. That is true. I mean, they have, the present board members do not, except for the new four new ones, I know them, uh, do not know the type of questions that you need to ask about running an electric utility. This is a very specialized business. It requires certain insights. It is a dynamic business, it's got a very stodgy business, but it's changing. Energy is becoming more interrelated, where you're changing BTUs for uh, a toll out. Sometimes we find ourselves in unique positions to provide opportunities to other people, and I think that's where we are right now, and that's where I offer my services to you, and ask for your consideration on March 31st. Thank you. Thank you. Who has to raise a point of honor is, of course, Mr. Scott Chapman, who is also a candidate for Area 5. Uh, Scott had thought he would have to, he was going to be uh, prevented from coming by a meeting of the Kiwanis Club of Marietta, which he serves actively, but here he is, so Mr. Scott Chapman.
thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for accommodating me by allowing me to speak tonight out of turn and without uh, having on my coat and tie. I didn't think I was going to make it here tonight, but uh, my name is Scott Chadwick, and I'm not related to Larry. Uh, any stretch of the imagination, I'm a 41-year Cobb County resident. I've been married to the same for 40 years. We, uh, I have been a, I'm retired from Cobb County government. I was the tax administrator for about 15 years, retiring in 2000. Prior to that, my background is in trucking and transportation. I've served in various capacities as sales manager, operations manager, <coughs> terminal manager, and uh, uh, prior to that, I was a credit manager for heavy equipment distributing company. I, I have been a Cobb County Commissioner. I have been the Chairman of the Cobb County Jury Commission. I serve on the board of the uh, Salvation Army and was its past chairman. I uh, also am the past president of the Marietta Kiwanis Club and have been a member for 22 years. I bring to this board, were I to be elected, I would bring maturity, good sense, judgment, and uh, a, a thorough knowledge of the workings of Cobb County. I know many, many people in this county, and uh, particularly in government, but uh, my interest in serving on this board is identical to what most of the gentlemen here tonight and ladies have, have spoken of. Uh, I don't want to see this EMC's treasury pilfered, pillaged, and plundered like it has been in the past, and people have made the point that all of these actions taken by the CEO received unanimous consent of that board of directors. So they're complicit, and if they're not, if they're unindicted co-conspirators now, I think that this audit that we will certainly push for will turn them into indicted co-conspirators. But uh, I appreciate, again, your support. If you would see fit to uh, vote for me, uh, I am not the endorsed candidate of Kyle the MC Owners Association, but uh, I'll do you a good job, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. We're now going to turn to Area 4, and our first speaker will be Mr. David McClellan. My name is David McClellan. Um, first, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I, um, my family and I have lived in uh, East Cobb, Area 4, for about 25 years. I'm a certified public accountant, certified cash manager. I have the MBA in finance from Georgia State. I'm a financial guy. I've been uh, working public accounting, uh, Fortune 500 companies, and privately owned companies for about 34 years. Um, and in the community, I have served in, in, in community-based, faith-based organizations, primarily deporting children and, uh, and youth groups. Um, like just about everyone else up here, I strongly support transparency, forensic audit, and bylaws of you. One thing I've been talking about from the beginning is a strong support and I think we really need a financial review. A financial review where we take our financials compared to others' financials and find out if any of our costs are out of line. And if so, why of what we need to do to do about it to move forward to make sure we have the, the most efficient rates out there. Um, and secondly, I think that um, the position of the director for the board should be about community service. So, I, you know, I, I've said this before, I kind of liken it to a, um, a volunteer fireman who's called on when he's needed to help out his neighbor to make the community a, a better place. And if you choose to vote for me, I'll do everything I can to make it a better place. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, for our natural sequence of speakers now, the next speaker will be David Lombroso. Uh, David informed me just tonight that he is withdrawing his candidacy. And he is going to uh, put his support behind Mr. Jim Hudson. So that is a, we have a news that we are breaking news tonight here at the Case Forum. I'm sure you may want, you know, Mr. Lund, David will probably be willing to stay behind after the meeting, maybe talk to people if you have questions, and, uh, you know, see, see what his feelings are about this issue. But he graciously said that since he had withdrawn, he would, or he would not insist on having a seat at the table. Uh, and with that, uh, we will move on with Area 4 and Mr. Jim Hudson. Thank you. Well, I think that said, before I say anything else, I must thank David. 
I'm honored that uh, he's chosen to uh, put his support behind me. Uh, I think it takes a strong individual to, uh, to take action he's taken. Thanks, Um And I want to thank all of you who have shown up tonight, uh, taking your time to come out here. Uh, we all always wish for more people to come out, but people are very busy, so I think it's a great idea that this is uh, been put uh, online so others who couldn't come out can uh, be participants. Uh, to get started, why am I running? It, it goes right back to why I got involved several years ago, and that is to stop and end the corruption. That hasn't changed. I don't think that will be done until the forensic audit is completed, uh, an in-depth forensic audit. And unfortunately, that's going to cost money. So the money we would rather not have to spend, but it's something that, unfortunately, I feel we have to do. I strongly support it. That behind us, we need to put the company on a, on a path to renew financial strength. Uh, if you look at the financials, I've done it. This company has been extremely weakened by uh, what we call it pilfering or wasteful spending. I mean, it's just unbelievable. $14 million for Plant Washington, for example, wasted money. Uh, we've got $34 million to uh, federal government to stay here, about a half a day to, uh, to uh, call BMC. It had to be matched by another about $14 million. Well, you wouldn't even have to take any money from the government if we hadn't wasted that money. Um, now let me move on. Uh, there's a lot of other things I support as well. Obviously, transparency, uh, term limits, things that others support. Um, and th these have all got to be done. Uh, and this will get Cobb and Z back on the uh, path, supporting you with your interest in mind. But I think one of the most important things that uh, we must do as board members and I'm committed to is having a relationship with all of the members, being out in the community, uh, having a path of communication, being open uh, to hearing from you, and uh, absolutely commit my support to you. A little bit of my background, uh, I spent 36 years with at and uh, Started out there, uh, as most, most people do, entry level. Worked my way through the corporation, up to every vice president before I left. I uh, later worked for Compton Corporation and for Carbon Motors, uh, an executive position. Uh, my educational background is Georgia Tech, very proud of that. Uh, got my uh, engineering undergraduate degree there, a bachelor in chemical engineering. I got my uh, business degree there in uh, business instruction. Uh, I've stayed involved in the community, uh, working with Georgia Tech, where I've done some teaching. Uh, I'm a leader there in the Georgia Tech Executive uh, Network Group in Cobb County. Also, I'm a member of the Executive, uh, uh, the County Executive Network. Okay. So anyway, to cut, uh, just to end this, the one thing you can be confident of is be on your board. Don't be no conflicts of interest. Thank you. Richard Ferguson, again, area four. Thank you, uh, Richard Ferguson, area four. A little bit about myself. I have a bachelor of business from the University of Georgia in risk management. Uh, they, the risk management part does entail all uh, facets of business. Any small business owner knows that uh, when you start having to buy insurance, there's a lot of things that you have to cover in it. And that's a, one of my expertise that I bring is uh, the uh, aspects, all aspects of business. One thing I've heard anyone talk about uh, tonight so far is that uh, on Thursday, the board, uh, Cobb EMC invited all the candidates over to Cobb EMC uh, for a presentation about the company to give us all more of a better background on that. And I agree with a lot of other people have said up here tonight that the the previous board, I believe, was asleep at the wheel. They were just, whatever White Brown told them to do, I think that's what they signed off on. And as a member of the board, I definitely will not be doing that. I, I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of the senior level management when we were over there. And I actually, to be honest with you, I got a good feeling from the people I talked to. A lot of those people were fighting with White Brown too. I don't know if anyone knows that, but they were not happy with the things that were going on either. They didn't like it, but if he's your boss, uh, the only other thing you can do is try and step out to the board and, and go to them. But um, there, there are other people that had there that were not happy with the things that were going on. Uh, as, a, as a member of the board, I'm not going to take everything directly from the CEO. I'm going to talk to other people that are running the company to find out everything that's going on so I can know as much about the company as there is to know. I think they do have good employees and I'm going to make them proud to work for the company again. 
Jack Welch said that the, the best companies you can have are people are the people. The people of the company make the company. And if you have people who are proud to show up to work every day, you're going to build a stronger company. I also want to be accessible to the members. I'm Richard Ferguson. I uh, appreciate your support, Area Ford. Thank you. Next, Mr. L. Cicada, also a member from Area 4. Now, if you notice how short people always sit next to tall people, <laughs> and walk together is unbelievable. <laughs> it always happens. Somebody asked me my name, I said Al Cerqueda, not Al Qaeda. Those, those are the bad guys. I am supposed to be the good guy. I have been living next to Indian Hills for the last 36 years, up lower Roswell. Been a CPA in Cobb County for 41 years. I have my office in Smyrna, now it's in Madera on Franklin Road. Franklin Road is a lot better than it used to be years ago. <clears throat> I began, a, I passed the CPA exam in 1971 and I have held a lot of small and a little bigger than small businesses, capitalize, improve the business and keep working and going on. For the world of Arecos I've been with the Georgia Wing for Civil Air Patrol for the last 28 years, if you know what the Civil Air Patrol is. Mm -hmm. With the Georgia Society of CPAs, director for two years. With the North Atlanta chapter, 30 years or more. Right now I'm with the Meliera Club New Market Fund, and I'm a member of the Holy Family Catholic Church Finance Committee. And I want to vote. March 31st. Any questions? Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And our last candidate for Mary 4, Lonnie Harris. I think thanks uh, to everybody for coming out tonight. Um, this is a very important issue, but it is it's disappointing not to see more uh, more folks out here. But Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Lonnie Ayers, running for Area 4. Uh, I was born in Marietta, raised here, graduated Osborne High School and started Georgia Tech in 1965. Um, I uh, then joined the Marine Corps in 68, came back, finished my studies, Marine Corps. <laughs> uh, and uh, moved to California. I, I had a successful architectural practice out there. Moved back here in the early 90s and I've been a real estate broker ever since. Uh, so I've, I've formed and managed uh, many companies, uh, managed many employees over the years. So I'm familiar with the business aspect. Um, so, you know, <laughs> these guys have stolen my material. I think most of us are, are kind of, agree, uh, we, we agree on the basic principles that we want to establish with, with the new board. Uh, we share the same values. Um, so, and, and I've listened to everybody here, and, and wow, I mean, there's some really great credentials. So, what makes me so special? Uh, why should you vote for me? Well, let me tell you why. First of all, uh, let me tell you what I'm not. I'm not an industry insider. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a consultant. Uh, I've never done business with a copy MC or, or, or related businesses. Um, with, with the electric power company. So I'm totally independent of, of any influence or preconceived ideas as to how things should be done and what products should be used. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not a serial board member. Um, I want to devote all my time to Copy and C Board of Directors. Um, I do want to just make the point that the, the board, I don't think should, is here to run the day-to-day -day operations of the Cobb MC. They've got great employees. They've got very talented, uh, knowledgeable engineers, IT people. Um, we're not, our job is not to take over their job, but to encourage them to provide leadership, strategic planning, to guide us into the future, uh, to, to embrace the alternative energies that are available. So please vote for me. Thanks. And Craig, you're the only one of 34 candidates who started out that I was not able to get in touch with. All the due diligence I applied to all these 34 other people 
somehow did not find me you. Of course, you didn't find me. I am. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Harfoot, who is also running from Area 4. Two minutes. Hi, I'm Craig Harfoot, and I'm here because I can read the newspaper. And uh, other groups, I got an email because all my information is with Cobb EMC, like the other gentlemen. I don't know what the deal is here. But anyhow, I've been, I think I've spoke up against what Brown did with the naming rights of the Cobb Performing Arts Center, spending the membership's money before anybody in this room said anything. I go to all the Cobb Commission meetings. I speak in the public comment section, and there's a record of it. You can go back and look at every meeting just about. Anyhow, I, I went to this orientation. I want to learn all I can about this entity. And uh, I did get to ask some questions there, but I didn't get answers. One of my questions was, they were talking about going from profit to non-profit, and I said, how much, do we pay property taxes? Do we pay tags on the vehicles? And, oh yeah, we pay a lot of money. So I asked, and this is a CFO that's telling us this, I said, well, how much do we pay Cobb County? A lot. So he said, get to me after the meeting, and I emailed him a day or two ago, and he says the same thing in the email. I, I want a dollar amount. I mean, I'm for real. And, and the reason we need to all know this, and I don't think most people do, is all this are hidden taxes that we're already paying in our rates, and then they put a sales tax on it with the squats and the sales tax from the state. And um, there's one other thing. I asked one, I was trying to vet some of our own candidates. I don't know any of these people, except maybe Bill Clements. I ran into him 10 years ago. But, um, this woman said that, I said, what do you think about how we fill vacancies on the board? Because, like, we did have a lawyer on the board, Glenn Brock, in my area for him. And he stepped down and the board nominated Johnny Gresham. And that's how he got on. It's like, this is what we need to change in the bylaws. She said, that's what the bylaws say and that's what we want to do. But I say no, because this is how judges are put in office and stay there forever in Georgia. The governor, they step down, let the governor appoint them, and then anybody running is running against the incumbent. We all know how that works. So um, I, I have a pra broad practical knowledge about how everything works. That's all I do at work is fix things. I keep things running at minimal cost. The one thing we got a problem with at EMC, our debt ratio. At, I wish I could say more. One thing we we, we got to deal with that big problem. Thank you. All right, um, and now we turn to area three, and there are two candidates there. First, Mr. Larry King. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I first want to congratulate all of you sitting through 19 courses of the same song. Uh, you know, Peter Drucker once said that uh, when you have a successful business, it's because people in charge of running the business make courageous decisions. And that's what I want to participate in as a member of the board to represent a Gary I'm a degree mechanical engineer out of Cleveland State University. I've lived in uh, County here for 12 years. Uh, my Georgia roots are from my mom and my dad. Dad is from Upson County and my mom is from Richmond County. So uh, I knew about the red plate before I got here. Um, let me talk about myself just a little bit. Um, I'm the only candidate in Area 3 that has utility experience. I've got 35 years of business development experience working to develop through research advanced energy systems and new technology that's so important for economic development and a safe and sustainable environment. I will bring that vision to the board uh, when I am elected. Uh, I think the uh, 
coming into a position like this, um, you have to come in with an open mind. I'm not approaching this with, with an agenda. I think the six of us who will be elected and the four persons that sit on the board, our first challenge will be to come up with a way to work together. And, and that's, that's going to be that's going to be a little bit difficult because many of us coming in here are, are coming in with a reform uh, mantra in, in mind. Yes, reform is, is important, but I would choose to describe it not as reform, but as change and improve. That's what needs to be done. Change and improve. Thank you. I appreciate your support, and I look forward to responding to this. Thank you, sir. It's good to be last. You, you folks will get to leave early. I'm Bill Hudson. I want you to know first that I have no formal training or expertise in the field of energy. My entire adult life has been in the field of law enforcement. I also want you to know that I'm not the preferred candidate of EMC management. I understand those people have a right to support and work for the candidates that they feel will be more supportive, more inclined to support their agenda. Uh, I think they have that right. I think the people, the members of the EMC and the owners will have a clear choice. The EMC or uh, management preferred candidates and the independent candidates. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, in our adult <coughs> life, I've been in the field of law enforcement. I've served as an elected sheriff of this county for 27 years. And I'm proud of my record of public service in this county. I see this as an opportunity for me to give back to my community. This community has been good to me and my family for many years. I see this as an opportunity to, to give back to my community. It's not about money, it's not about power. It's about contributing something. I very much want to be a part of returning trust and honesty to the board of directors for Coffee EMC. If you give me the opportunity to serve on the board of directors, I will serve with honesty, integrity, and be accountable as I have been for many years when I was in public office. Be accountable to you for my every action and my every vote. Thank you for being here tonight and thank you for your support for my candidacy for your support. Thank you. I think let's have one more round of applause for the guy. Whatever you may think about this. We're going to turn to our question and answer. I did want to briefly mention uh, uh, why these people here are here and others are not. They are with Mr. Harfoots and Scott Sakuras. There are 23 candidates out of what I think are now 30, well, there are now 29 candidates running. So we have a, most of them are here. We had about five of them who simply had a conflict in their schedule. That was Brian Boyd, out of town on business, Kelly Bodner, she's on the committee to pick her new school principal and they were meeting tonight, Eric Broadwell, he's in Washington for an international conference, Rudy Underwood, out of town on business, and Rick Wimmers unable to attend. Um, the, there were two, Mr. Allen Box and William Pepper Kelly, who were given an invitation to, to attend, but simply uh, did not RSVP one way or, uh, one way or another. Um, and with that, as you know, well, I think time-wise we're doing pretty good. Obviously, we did not really hold the candidates to a strict two minutes. Wanted to have a little some time left over. Um, and again, I'm not going to be, you know, again, terribly 
rigid about time for answering, but at some point, I think, ladies and gentlemen, you know that, you know, that, that, you know all good things must come to an end. So you will have to find some, <laughs> bring your question, your answer to an end at some point. Let me ask the first question. <laughs> In light of the depths of the trouble that call BMC, do you think the board should consider replacing CEO Chuck Nelson, PR rep Sam Kelly, and the law firm that gave legal approval of the creation of Cobb Energy? And I will let our candidates have at it. In light of the depths of the trouble at Cobb EMC, do you think the board should consider replacing CEO Chuck Nelson? replace PR rep Sam Kelly and replace the law firm that gave legal approval to the creation of the <clears throat> What's not getting the information that I asked that was pretty simple? I mean, it's not like rocket science to find out how much in property taxes. I would say that um, I need to get certain of them. Or saying yes or no. I mean, I know what some of this happened, but if we don't change how we put board members on, if a few people get to select and a few people get to vote and put the board on, what's changed? You can, it's like regime change in Iraq. Nothing changed. And um, they're still Muslim, they still do what they do, and you know, we actually need to get to the bottom of how to fix it, and then we can consider who should go and who should. But simply stated, I think that we have to wait till the, the uh, forensic audit is done. I, I think that anybody that's in the position uh, of authority at the co-op is suspect because they're tainted by the prior management and the prior board, but They've made some changes based on what the new board, and the forensic audit is the thing that's going to tell. We've got to see what comes out, but it needs to be a true forensic audit to get all the way into the books of Cobb Energy, which was not a private company. It was a company that was hijacked by the management that was owned by us and existed solely because of the assets and income of Cobb EMC. Shame on them. Let's find out what their quote unquote private company really was about and let the chips fall where they may. That's a good question. I answered it in my resume and out there what was mailed out and I quote what I said and every member has this a management succession plan for all executives at Cobb EMC. Any well run corporation has a succession plan in mind. The audit would determine how quick we do succeed some of these people. But for now, you need to know who's going to take over. You remember a short time ago when the judge said that Dwight Brown had to go away. They did a worldwide search and ended up with Dwight Brown again. <laughs> and then when that didn't work, because Judge Houston flushed it that way, they turned around and got Chip. And, you know, Chip may be a good guy, may not. I want to know who made decisions. He was, I mean, he was at those board meetings too, folks. All the problems we have at Cobb, EMC, has nothing to do with survival of the company. Is how do we manage it such that we thrive and that we flourish in the 21st century? Not how we got into this mess, but how do we go forward to have the best company out there, the lowest rates, and the best service provider that we can be? Thank you. Just, you know, I uh, talked about meeting uh, Mrs. Brown and, and uh, Chip Nelson and David Johnson. Uh, we were, were told that Chip was chosen because of his operational experience. I believe a primary responsibility of any board is to, is to have a succession plan and uh, for all the officers. And uh, that, that is really a primary responsibility in terms of replacing Chip. If it's found that he supported Dwight Brown's policies, then uh, we, need to, we need to have more, more information before I can say that we would replace Chip Brown, I mean not Chip Nelson, on uh, the question about Sam Kelly. Uh, when you look at the history of what's happened, 
I, I understand he was he was representing the board of directors at the time, but it but I really felt that he had their their interest at, at heart instead at fifty one percent or greater than our interest at heart. Any time he spoke, and uh, and I and I will say that I haven't seen a lot of public affairs. Uh, uh, efforts on his part to the members. His his efforts were for the directors, not us. Uh, in terms of Keenan Spalding, uh, I think April the 1st they should be terminated. They're still on the payroll if everybody does know that. Uh, I, I just can't believe that they weren't replaced uh, at the election of the first four reform board members. That I asked the question why Keenan Spalding wasn't replaced. And they said, oh, well, we can't change you know, law firms in the middle of the lit litigation because it's going to cost us more money. Well, folks, we spent over $25 million, of which more than 20 of it has gone to the 26 lawyers on the defendant's side. And Tripper can vouch for this. The, the, defend the plaintiff's side had about $4 million in fees. We had four lawyers against 26. So in terms of Keenan Spalding, they should be fired immediately. And I would submit that, as I said before, I try not to make decisions without being fully informed. And until there is an audit and you understand who did what, um, I don't think we can sit here and say people need to go or not go just based on public opinion. I think it is based on fact. And I would wait until after the audit and see what happened and, and make appropriate decisions, as has been said by several people here, based on that set of information. She just answered for me. I agree. I don't believe in making decisions until I have the facts before me. I think that's a lot of what happened in the past where decisions were made based on what somebody else told them. We need to have before us the audit. We need to understand what happened. At that point, we can start holding people accountable. Um, I don't know what the situation is with the law firm, but I sit back and think, I cannot imagine why we're still employing them. Well, quite simply, I agree as well. There's definitely supposed to be a forensic audit, uh, and then afterwards, uh, the board considers uh, and discusses and makes a decision based on the findings. Uh, that's one reason why I'm running for the board is to find the answers to those questions. Uh, who was responsible? Was Chip Nelson responsible? Did Sam Kelly play a part in it? If they did, they need to be held accountable. That's information I don't have right now. Uh, and again. Another thing with a law firm, if this law firm told them it was okay to spin off a, a for-profit company out of a not-for-profit company, I agree they need to be fired right away too. That was in the worst interest of anyone, any member of Cobb EMC. So it, it will take the facts, but I, I plan on holding those people accountable if we do find that they were wrong and in there. Thank you. The two officers, no, not yet. We don't have enough information about what they have done or what happened. The law firm, probably, yes. The law firm gave the director what is called an opinion letter. That's a legal document. Now they could do that, or they could transfer property, they could start a new cup energy. Did I do that? <laughs> That's really a legal document that the law firm did that probably they should have not done. Maybe they have their reasons. Maybe we can force them to explain the reasons and then make a decision. But I think the, the law firm will probably need to be looking for a new one. Um, I think there's a lot of information that we don't know, we don't have any idea about. I think maybe it's being withheld until the Dwight Brown trial, criminal trial, proceeds. So with that in mind, I, I'm, I'm not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater as far as the executives are concerned. Um, as far as the attorneys are concerned, I'll tell you, it would take a lot of convincing uh, from someone for, for, for me to agree to keep them on board. I just, I pass the microphone. As far as Chip Nelson and uh, Sam Kelly are concerned, I think we need to wait until after the forensic audit is concluded. As for the law firm, unequivocally out right now, the minute we get uh, the board in place, the amount of money that it will cost to uh, 
conduct a forensic audit pales in comparison with the amount of money those people have stolen out of our treasury. And I think we need to get that audit done. Because whatever it takes to get that audit completed, we need to do. Well, to start with, with Chip, I, I think that's just another failure of the past board. Uh, he shouldn't have gotten a position to start with. As I understand it, we spent about a quarter of a million dollars, about $250,000, if I have the number correct. And uh, if that money was worth spending, I think the advice we got was worth using. So I, I, it's beyond me why he even got that position. But um, uh, now I think that, uh, that he's there. Uh, we can't use public opinion to oust him. Uh, again, we have to do the forensic audit. Again, uh, what that, uh, whoever's involved in that would be uh, therefore dealt with. Uh, obviously, I don't believe this could have uh, taken place by just one individual and a few people on the board even though that's the way it appears to be uh, in terms of the indictment. There's only one person being indicted. Um, I think there's more to it, and I think that we'll find out as we go along. Uh, I think uh, as far as the uh, law firm, they've enriched themselves enough at our expense. That's a huge amount of money. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the work they did uh, should never have cost that much. So uh, I would certainly support uh, finding a, another law firm and moving on. Any finding a, another law firm and moving on. Should I say to them, uh, the law firm definitely needs to be replaced immediately. I wouldn't wait. Uh, I think we should have gone for an outside person to run EMC. I don't know why he got that position. How can we start over when we have the same people running things? I mean, we have no idea whether he was involved or not. But, I mean, why didn't we go for somebody outside that may have had some inside and been able to find out things instead of us waiting? So I would like to say yes, go ahead and replace them now. I mean, that's my first inclination, but of course, the audit's going to show who voted. And I think the audit's going to go deeper than that. I think we're going to be able to find, other than those two people who were involved, I think there were a lot, lot more people involved, all the way down the line. And anybody that was involved with this whatsoever should be thrown out. <coughs>
white brown or Sarah Brown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of things. The, uh, first of all, I was a little confused about the law firms. Uh, that, that group was not involved with advising when all this was going on. There's a group out of Texas that were the, the advisors to Dwight Brown, and, and they and the board were the voters. I mean, you know, they, they were the ones who input the information. The board voted on it, put Dwight Brown ruled with an iron fist and, and, and all the stuff that he wanted done. So, Dwight Brown's gone. All the board members are going to be gone. So the, we know the most guilty people involved in all these decisions are gone. I think we need to hold off on the other two. Uh, I mean, I, I know for a fact that I mean, it's been kind of obvious that Chip Nelson immediately came out and said he didn't know favor the plan, but he didn't get a vote on the board meeting. He's not a board member. So I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just stating facts. So I think we do need to look at the information. We need to see um, what does come out. But I don't believe they got votes, so I would just automatically throw them out at this point until there's information that uh, could be that they deserve to be gone. Well, I've heard it stated before that Murphy's Law of Management, a man that can smile if something goes wrong has found someone else to blame it on. And this may be part of what was happening there, or may not. The forensic audit, when it goes back, it's going to trace the flow of money, who got money, who was lent money, who was favored to get options, whether they were preferred or uh, otherwise. And I think that traceability will tell you where and who was involved. Uh, I'm not a proponent of ready, fire, aim. I think we need to get ready, we need to look and aim at the right pieces of information so we can make the correct decision when we fire. Uh, and, and the same with the legal firm. I'm not sure what they were involved in, but I know the legal firm isn't in there so that they can get sued or that they become culpable. I know that what firms do is they advise you for what you ask them for, not necessarily what you're trying to do as a strategy or an act. Uh, so in that case, I would probably also want to get all of the information about who was involved during that whole time and then make the decision. I'm about ready to save you three a lot of embarrassment here. <laughs> King and Spalding had nothing to do with the formation of Cobb Energy. Cobb Energy was formed, uh, the, the lit law firm that advised Cobb EMC on the formation of Cobb Energy was a law firm out of Texas. Jim, you're right on that. His name is Vincent and Elkins. Anybody ever heard of Vincent and Elkins? Yeah. Anybody ever hear of a company by the name of Enron? Bingo. Same, same, same law firm that, that formed all of the subsidiaries that uh, Enron had to hide losses. And they come to Marietta, Georgia and set up a similar situation here, in a, here, here at Cobb EMC. King and Spalding, uh, now I understand why people are very upset about King and Spalding because they're the law firm that was hired to defend Cobb EMC uh, through some of the litigation in the derivative lawsuit. But I think they were third, fourth, or fifth law firm that was finally hired to, to defend them. There's a lot of law firms that have worked on this case over the last five years. King and Spalding is just here at the end. What you all should be asking is what law firms are advising the board right now, okay? The Governance Committee, which is, a, which is formed by the board, is advised by a law firm by the name of Rogers and Hart. And anybody ever hear of a guy by the name of Steve Fox? <laughs> He's the one that got up on the stand that he personally crafted the whole, um, what I call the LBJ speech for Dwight Brown, that Dwight Brown could, could not seek, but he could accept the office of CEO. He's still employed by Cobb EMC. He's still on retainer. All right, folks. The, uh, the law firm that is corporate counsel for Cobb EMC, um, and I forget the name of the firm, uh, Bob Silliman is their, their I'm sorry, Autry. Autry? Okay, there you go. 
Well, Bob Sullivan is the guy that was at the microphone at the Cod Annual Meeting back in 2007 when I made a motion to demand all of the information regarding the business relationship uh, dealing with Cobb Energy be disclosed to the members, which, as many of you know, I was turned down on my motion to, to get the board to require, to require the board to ex expose this. Ultimately, though, folks, Bob Silliman is still corporate attorney for Cobb EMC. So here we have a situation where we have the former COO of Cobb EMC, who is now the CEO of Cobb EMC, and if he didn't know what was going on during all this with Cobb Energy, shouldn't we be asking why not? Shouldn't we be concerned about that? Sam Kelly, on the other hand, he's been the public face of Cobb EMC, and he's been the public face defending Dwight Brown and this board for years now. Unfortunately, we need to make some moves here. We can't have the public face of Cobb EMC, the same guy that was out there defending Dwight Brown and this board, still be the public face of Cobb EMC. It's bad business, folks. And it's bad business to have the COO of Cobb EMC, who was here during all of the stuff, still as Cobb COO. Okay? That wasn't a simple yes or no. Uh, I agree with just about everything everybody said. Once again, everybody's saying, give me the facts, and we'll make a decision based off the facts. As board members, our job is to appoint the CEO. It should also be our job to make annual performance review of that employee. And then you determine what you're going to do, good, bad, or ugly. But it's his job to bring in his management team, whoever it is, and here again, that comes into play. If we see something's out of whack down the line, we should certainly bring to that person's attention, and it's up to him to make those decisions. Evidence-based decisions. That's the, uh, that's the mantra. That's what I support. We'll get the evidence together. We'll look at it. With the ships fall where they may. And I don't mean it the way it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Answer both at the same time and we'll say the word. 
Yeah. No, no, that's what I'm asking you. I, okay, I'm going to pose these two questions. How, how do you feel about term limits? Pretty simple question, but almost yes or no. And how long have you been involved with changing Cal BMC? Bill, we'll start with you. I have absolutely no problem with the term limits. Uh, I think there's, uh, we probably should address that and study that issue, or the new board should address that if the bylaws change. Probably, I've been involved, I best guess, a couple of years. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think term limits are a, a great idea, uh, and the board needs to uh, needs to get involved in that, um, along with the other high priority uh, issues that will, uh, will come before us. Um, how long have I been involved in changing comments? Ever since I decided to run for this position. So that's two months. Now, that places me at a disadvantage. Uh, so big. But uh, sometimes it, uh, it takes some very egregious things to get your PO. And uh, I got pushed over that limit. And uh, here I am. As far as term limits, that's in my bio and platform. Uh, I don't think you should serve any more than three consecutive terms, three-year terms, which is nine years. Um, I think the thing about if you don't have term limits, you have the good old boy center where your ego gets in the way of your responsibility, and that's been proven. Uh, not only just the Cobb EMC board, but uh, look at Congress. Um, I think that other than term limits, I'm, I'm a lot like Larry from a standpoint of when did I get involved. Number one, I just moved back here four years ago. Previously, I've been here eight years and, and three years, and all of those times with Cobb EMC, but apparently everything hit the fan when about, about the time I got back, um, um, basically got involved um, several months ago, and um, for basically the same reasons to make a change. The question Asha should be, who actually voted in the last two elections? I'd like to know who did, but... Anyways, uh, as most of you know, I've been actively involved in reforming Cobb EMC for over five years. And, uh, of course, uh, in my biography, it does state my position on term limits. I'm strongly for term limits. Um, I uh, would like to see no more than three three-year terms, so a total of nine years. And uh, that's in my bio. I'm for term limits, and I've only been involved in the last two or three months. I also agree that uh, three terms is probably enough for anybody. I, uh, I think they get too entrenched once they get past that point, so I would favor that. How long have I been involved in, in uh, changing copy I'm sitting actually for about the last 13 years, but I was doing it as a consultant, helping them start energy management programs, helping them do the smart grid study, doing those kinds of work despite all the other stuff going on. Uh, I didn't get to vote in the boardroom, but I sure hope I do get to the future. Well, you've heard me speak tonight. You know, I believe that term limits are a must. Well, people here on the board, uh, there's just too much room for the good old boy syndrome to get involved, and uh, it just uh, leads to corruption. Uh, I've been involved with uh, trying to change Cobb BMC since the meeting over there in the loading dock you know, four or five years ago. Uh, and also, I've been actively involved in getting people out to vote in all the elections that they've had. And out here I am putting my stake in the skin of the game. I also believe in term limits. And I've been involved with COD EMC since uh, the first election last year, and I think it was in November. And uh, I just want to say one other thing. that. This is a full-time responsibility with a part-time pay, and that's the only way to go. Uh, you answer the <clears throat> second question first. Uh, I, I've been involved since last uh, August uh, when I started coming to meetings. Uh, I've been reading about it for an extended period of time uh, before that. Second question, yes, I would, I would be for term limits. But uh, really, I actually think the, that my proposal of rotating jobs every year is a lot stronger than that because uh, 
if we hadn't let Larry Chadwick be a chairman for 30 years, uh, what we're going to do, let somebody be chairman for, uh, for uh, three terms at uh, nine years, that would be do, we'll be back here going through the same process. I actually think if you, if you we, we're in a really unique situation here. All these directors are going to start on an equal footing. And we can keep them on the equal footing by having them to rotate positions every year so that, uh, uh, that they wouldn't be, uh, 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 they wouldn't ever build a power base underneath them. So I'm for term limits, but I don't think that's a total answer. Uh, I said this during my little speech. I, I think six years. Everybody's saying nine years. I think six years is more than enough. I mean, we have a lot of qualified. You can see how many qualified people are running up here. I don't think there's anybody that should be disqualified. I think a lot of people up here have a lot of knowledge. I think six years is plenty. I think pay has to be limited. I, I don't want to see somebody running for the board as a job. Because it is a part-time, even if it takes 10, 12 hours a week. I don't want entrenched people. It's supposed to be doing a good service for a co-op. It's a co-op. We're not a for-profit company. Um, Trooper, I'll tell you, I did vote in November. I was out of town for the January vote. I admit it. Sorry, but I did. Proud to stay in the September vote. September vote. I'm proud to sit in that traffic trying to get into the church. That was a great turnout to see all that. Along the rest of them, I'm for term limits. Uh, I believe that it should be shorter rather than longer. I'd like to see more involvement uh, by members of COB and C and more opportunity for them to be involved. So don't let uh, board members get entrenched. As far as uh, my involvement, uh, it goes back about five years, uh, back to the uh, annual meetings. And uh, then I uh, went uh, numerous times to uh, the hearings. Uh, so I sat in court to uh, listen to a lot that was said, and I've been very active in the uh, uh, organizing and getting out the vote and, and voted uh, every opportunity. I've been involved in this uh, since last summer, and uh, I've attended just about every meeting that's been held. I've attended just about every meeting that's been held by Cobb, the EMC Owners Association, and they've had Cobb as well. Folks, up until now, the Board of Directors has more or less appointed whoever is going to be sitting on that board. It's been a uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your situation. I don't see any need for term limits as long as the people are, as long as the candidates are going to be voted upon by the membership. What we want to keep uh, from happening is for the people on the board just to turn around and say, I'd like to see this fellow here on it. And, uh, let, let's get him on here or her on here. As long as the uh, Board of Directors is being elected by the general membership. I don't see any reason whatsoever for term limits. Okay, well, um, whoever asked these questions, thank you. Uh, as far as term limits are concerned, that, that's a very, very important question. I absolutely support uh, term limits. Um, whether it's going to be six years or nine years uh, out on that. Um, as far as the time involved, um, you know, I started following this thing. It became a, you know, fodder, fodder for Jerry at a term back when uh, Tripper and uh, the other five gang of six, as I call them, uh, filed their lawsuit. I was outraged. And uh, so when it came around for the uh, elections in 2010 for Area 4, I went and qualified. Um, so I've been qualified to run for this office uh, for two years now. And uh, now that, you know, the, the past management board are, are out on, out on the, the street, um, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I remain passionate about this issue. And I want to be on board when Copy MC ushers in a new day and, uh, and restores its, its place, as far as I'm concerned, with the, uh, premier electric co-ops in the nation. Yeah, term, term limits, yeah, probably, probably one year would be too short. You don't know what's going on in one year. Four, five, six years would be adequate. Uh, and the board should be replaced in Strata. You cannot replace the whole board in one year. 
uh, you go to this board of directors meeting, they start talking about appropriations and encumbrances and deferred taxes. You know, what in the world are they talking about? So it should be replaced two or three at a time. The ex I got excited about these uh, elections really about three years ago when I noticed there were no attorneys and no CPAs in the board of directors. If there would be a good CPA and a good attorney, a lot of the things would not have happened to the board. Thank you. Uh, I agree with everyone else on the term limits. Uh, I have spoken to other people that work at uh, different co-ops and uh, a lot of people need to realize it's going to take some training and that's going to be expense of the EMC for all the board of directors to get up to speed on the business of running an EMC electric membership. Uh, the purchase contracts for the power only come around every three to five years and I think it's really important that when you have a board that's qualified that has been trained, someone that hasn't only been in a year or two, to look at those contracts, understand all the derivatives and everything that goes into purchasing the power because that's going to be the big, one of the biggest expense the company's going to have is the purchase of the power. I do favor term limits, but uh, I think in a six-year time period, you may only have a chance to vote on that contract once. I'd like to either see nine or 12-year limits. I don't want to see people get complacent in their job. At the same time, you need to have people that have been educated, understand those contracts, know about the business, know about the buying of the power, and, and look to the future of that. Um, as far as making a difference, I wasn't one of the six people that filed the lawsuit, but uh, I plan on making a difference if I get elected to be a member of the board. I think we can all sit here and sing to the choir all day long, but it really comes down to being, being a board member and following up on what you said. Uh, with regards to term limits, um, I definitely support term limits, and I'm good with two or three year uh, term limits, a total of six years, I think is plenty added to move on and let someone else step into the job. Uh, in terms of involvement, uh, like many people, I've been reading about it for a number of years and I've been actively uh, involved uh, in, in the past few months. Um, I think the question, the most important question I think that you guys probably are wrestling with is, is what is, who among us are the best qualified candidates to lead us into the future? Because that's really what this, this whole process is about. What is, what is the best interest of, of our co-op for the future? Uh, and in regards to term limits, actually there's been national studies done from nonprofit organizations that say that the most effective boards tend to limit their board term limits to two at most three terms. So in this case it would be six at most nine, and I support that. Uh, as far as involvement, I guess it's kind of who you ask. If you ask these people that have been around me and had to listen to my ranting for the last four or five years, uh, it would be that long, being actively involved. I voted. I've been watching and carrying on what's going on here for several months now. I too support term limits. I think they should be in place pretty much everywhere, especially where it's an office that's, that's voted on by the public. Um, and, and I agree with what Sherry said as far as two or three terms. Um, as far as involvement, um, I've really been actively involved the past couple of months, made some decisions in my life that says it's time to, to go try to make a difference. And, and, and as uh, Lawrence King said on the other side, that it, it may go against me that I haven't been doing this for years like some people, but uh, the fact of the matter is that this was the time in my life and, and here I am. In uh, terms of, uh, in, for the term limits, uh, I think we ought to ask the COB MC members owners what they think about that. I, 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 would, I have term limits in my platform. I don't know if it's two three-year terms or uh, three three-year terms, but I think we need to, to ask the COB MC members, owners, what they think we need to do. Uh, in, uh, in regards to, uh, you know, where we're headed to as a as a as an EMC, uh, I, I believe that uh, you know the the uh, focus should be on the on the COB EMC members owners in, in terms of everything that we do. In terms of term limits, the three of us, Tim and Tom and myself, we're going to serve four. One of us is going to serve four years already. That's been decided by the judge in the settlement. And personally, if I serve. 
as long as my predecessor, 32 years, I'd be 100 years old. So I'm not, I'm only going to serve four years and out. If I can't clean up this mess in four years and restore the confidence and the trust in you people, the members, you, you need to kick me out. Well, I'm, I'm going to self-impose for four years from me. I'm 68 years old. Give me four and I'm out. Number two, I've been involved in this operation for seven years. That's when we built the house in a monopoly area controlled by Cobb EMC. So that day I got involved and I've been involved ever since. I happened to be one of the victims, if you read the docket, in the criminal charges against Dwight Brown. And so I'm talking to the DA frequently on this thing and Mr. Butters, his lead attorney. And I, I'm so bored with retirement, I go to all the trials. And I'll be there next time try there, which is the first week in April. I mean, it's, a, it's kind of interesting down there to see how he did this to us. And I just sit there in amazement. But basically, I've been involved seven years from the Senate, the House hearings, all the, I've been in every meeting here, I've voted on everything. I don't think I've missed a vote yet in our trial day. And four years is quite sufficient for this old boy. Uh, terms real simple to me, too. It's uh, two, two terms at most, three, uh, and I'm not going to go long either. I'm probably not as long as it's built. About involvement, I, I feel real passionately about this, that if you look back at what happened, in September, we had 2% of our membership voting. In November, with the reform election, we have 1%. In the Cobb EMC Owners Association, we have one thirtieth of 1% determining who's going to be endorsed in the reform candidate. And Ed Crow at the meeting last week at Cobb EMC said, what happens once this becomes a boring EMC again? You know what's going to happen? People are going to be even less involved than the passion that's been going on. And I'll tell you as an attorney, every divorce attorney learns first thing that it's not love and hate that goes on in a divorce. It's love, the opposite of love is indifference. And that's the thing we can't be indifferent. I'll tell you what I've been doing here. I moved here in 1990 and I've been coming to every meeting. I've been voting in every election. And this is really important to me. It makes a difference that we get involved. I'm, I've been there and I've been looking at this ever since Cobb Energy was formed because I knew what Dwight Brown was going to do because I know this industry before this lawsuit. All right. <clears throat> I, what, the what original question was how long have you been doing something about this? Well, there was a West Cobb candidate. I mean, I've been going to the EMC elections like 10 years ago. And when they just had one nominee, they, Dwight Brown would have to have door prizes and they start the elections on Saturday just to get a handful of people there to vote on one candidate. There's no opposition. I mean, this is how bad it's been for so long. And I went there on behalf of Paul Paulson, who was running, but he would have to be in Sweden at the time, and I was just working the crowd. I was saying, hey, we need to elect somebody different, you know, just not whoever has been nominated. And, and uh, basically, the most interesting thing that happened is Dwight Brown in his boss hog attire, I want a hat, a white suit. Comes down to me after the thing, after I'm up there talking, and it's like, who are you? You know, how dare you? And anyhow, I, I would say I got the longest credentials uh, for wanting change. And then term limits, we, we've heard another gentleman say, if you have if someone stepped out, now they, this whole panel neglected the fact that Glenn Brock and Brock Clay was a board member in my area. And this was when they had elections. And that, you know how long ago that was. My point is, they've stepped down, they appoint other people, and, and then all we get is one choice again. We need term limits, but we got a problem. We've got all nine areas brand new. We're going to have to stagger these out so that we can have like two years, two years, two years. And I would say we need to elect a chairman each year All right. to keep it honest. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, we will be in touch with everybody, letting you know how we're going to use the, the, uh, the video and particularly the candidates. If they want to use it, I'm sure we can make it available to them. 
I thank you all for coming. I thank you. We all thank the candidates for coming. I appreciate it. And with that, I think we will declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you again very much.